Hey guys, this is Billy from adultchiller.com. Going on a walk today, but I wanted to do kind of a very special uh, YouTube video today. I This is one I've been thinking about for a while and I wanted to do my top five book recommendations for you on your cello journey. I went to cello at age 25 from scratch and I had already had a degree in literature and, and creative writing. So for me, once I started my cello lessons and I got completely obsessed, I wanted to immerse myself as much as possible and a big part of that was reading anything and everything I could get my hands on. What I did today for this list is, I, I just want to show some kind of criteria. I'm not doing any like biographies of famous composers or players because I think those are maybe a little more obvious um, sources. And then I also, I'm not doing any books that are like general music. I have three categories. Um, for my five books. The first is going to be two books that are kind of I'll call non-fiction for string playing and then the Then my third book will be a piece of actual fiction and then the final two books are I'll call them educational for cello playing Okay, so um, If you find this helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it and uh, Yeah, let's get started. So I almost decided to call this Billy's book club to <laughs> they have cup of coffee here. My wife made this. Uh, we've been doing ceramics for about a year now and she insisted that I let you know that this coffee mug she made on the potter's wheel. So good job. And uh, yeah, so let's just break into the, the book recommendations. I think I have about 15 minutes before it starts raining on us. Okay, so here we go. First, so we're nonfiction books for string playing. The first one is right here. Indivisible by Four. It's by uh, Arnold Steinhardt. He was the first violinist of Guarneri String Quartet, which was, um, if you haven't heard of them, it was like one of the very top string quartets for decades. Um, American based, but they, you know, played all over the world. And so the other thing that's really cool about that group is that they, they formed in 1964 and they stayed together the entire time, which is almost unheard of for string quartets. It's usually like, you know, you can only last so many years, just four people working together and then it gets difficult. So, and that's actually kind of what this book's about and what I loved. Getting started with my cello journey, I was obsessed with the idea of being in a quartet. Um, I just think the literature is amazing. I love the cello's role in string quartet literature. And this is a great, this book is a great eye into sort of like what it's like to actually be in a crazy, in a really successful string quartet and the difficulties, not just musically speaking, but also like personalities. You know, you get to a point where we're tr you're trying to figure out how to play the music or what repertoire to pick for the next season. And you bring it down to votes to be democratic about it. And then it's a quartet. So pretty often you get like two against two and it's a total stalemate. Um, and then you know, like, what do you do about travel? It's like, you're basically almost become married to three other players. <laughs> and you see them more than you see your family sometimes. So it was just a really great read. It's easy reading. So this is something you could just pick up, like, and then, you know, on the train, you just read this. It's really fun, okay? The second book is called The Art of Quartet Playing. And it's similar in the sense that it's, the author is David Blum, 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 Blum. And uh, he was in conversation with the Guarneri String Quartet. So it's the same quartet I'm talking about from the first book, but it's, and it's written in kind of a conversational form. So this is totally different though. This one is equally fascinating to me, but this one's really more about like the music making, okay? So it's like, okay, what do you do? like to work on intonation as a group how do you think about how do you approach that how do you approach voicing and passing the melody around and what and what i love is that during the conversation in the book itself they'll actually include the musical examples that they're talking about so you can even you know when i first read this i hadn't been playing cello very long it, some of this was just over my head both technically speaking and be, being able to really understand what they were talking about but it was just fun to have the musical examples there and to follow along and I did feel like I understood what they were saying by the end of it really really fun 
this is not as easy of reading, but I think it's again, just a, almost like a behind the scenes eye into what it takes to be an incredible string quartet. I mean, you, you see these groups and you go to a, a concert and I feel like when you see the concert, it's kind of like the tip of the iceberg and you see this polished, beautiful little iceberg on top. And then these two books kind of give you a sense of the enormous 95% of the ice that's under the water that nobody sees, but that's required to produce that little cap of ice that you pay for at a concert. Okay. Now, moving on. So, book number three is Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann. So this is fiction. It's about two characters. They grow up as, um, you know, schoolmates and, and friends. One is just like a real smart guy, like most of Thomas Mann's characters. And the other guy is a musical composer who hit not as a person resembles Arnold Schoenberg, but his, his com composition and his like, quote unquote, discoveries that he like made and the revelation revolution he made in music making in this book is basically 12 ton serialism, which is what Schoenberg did. Um, oddly, Schoenberg and Thomas Mann were in LA at the same time when, when uh, Mann wrote this. And if I, from what I understand, Schoenberg wasn't exactly thrilled that Thomas Mann just like kind of used Schoenberg's, uh, you know, musical trajectory as part of his character, Mann's character. But it, to describe this, the Faust theme is really a, a major part of this. The, <laughs> To try to describe this book would be difficult. It's like a lot of modernist literature, which was some of my favorite stuff. It's it's oftentimes just like a handful of really, really smart people in a room having really high-end fun conversations, but it's not like a ton of action going on all the time. So it's like, you know, Kierkegaard this and Nietzsche that and you know, that kind of thing. But really, really worth it. I will say I've read it twice and Second time I read it was a handful of years ago, but I'd been through music school and I really knew much more about theory and I enjoyed it even more the second time because this book is so well researched and it deals with music so deeply. It's, it's a really satisfying piece of reading, especially for someone who's kind of really excited about being a cellist now and being a musician. It's not easy reading. <laughs> this isn't like a beach read necessarily, but it's really enjoyable. All right, so that covered the one piece of fiction. Next two books um, are, I call them educational. So this is one I highly, highly recommend. Okay, so this was written by Hans Jensen and former student of his, who's now uh, also a teacher, Mina Rose Chung. This book, I don't want to be, you know, glib and call it like my Bible, but it, if you want a Bible for how to play in tune, intonation, that that's this book, okay? So the great thing about the book, I, I was playing and I, you know, my ear was developing and getting better, but there were still times where you're just not 100% sure why something's out of tune, how, what exactly, exactly is in tune. You just kind of like, gets to the point where you're like, I hope I have a good day out there because when I'm really on, it's great. And when I'm not, I'm not 100% sure what I'm not doing. This book in the first half of it, the, you know, it's in two parts, the book, and the first part is just intonation. It explains all the, the, the major intonation systems we use as string players. So that would be like, um, <laughs> that'd be like just intonation. And then there's the Pythagorean intonation. And then there's equal temperament, which is like if you're playing with a piano, where it's, you know, equal, equally tempered half steps. Um, it was amazing for me. I actually was lucky enough to study with Mr. Jensen for a period of time and, and kind of go, I brought this book to the lessons and I would go through it. So it was enormously helpful. The second part of the book has incredible exercises that are a little difficult, very, very worthwhile. And the great thing is if you buy the book, there's the cellomind.com is, is the website. And then for many of those exercises, he has some of his top students um, playing them exquisitely, the exercises, so you can both see and hear what they should sound like. And that can that can help if you just kind of buy the book and you're like, okay, this looks cool, but you know, how fast should this go? What should I be listening for? What should it look like? 
and you can actually see one of his students perform it. So yeah, so just, just to show you, you've got this first part, which is all about explaining intonation and also from like a scientific standpoint. So it, it really demystified a lot of this for me um, to the point where you can actually just kind of using a tuner, you could actually like essentially calculate how many cents sharp or flat certain notes have to be relative to the equal temperament notes. Um, and then in the second half, you get some, you know, pretty involved uh, different types of exercises. A lot of it, which I found, the parts I found super helpful were, he called, I think, velocity exercises, which is on like developing impulses to speed your plane up. And then also um, really, really good for shifting exercises and kind of the arm motion and, and concepts you can think about to clean up your shifting. All right, and finally, another book by Hans Jensen that's called Practice Mind. This book is fascinating and amazing and a, a perfect companion to Cello Mind. Cello Mind is very scientifically based on, on the technique of playing, the intonation, those kind of things I just talked about. Practice Mind, what I, for me, when I re read through it, it's a lot about self-discovery of like who you are by learning what the psychology behind practice is, you know, like what makes you, what makes us motivated, different things that can motivate us, how to figure out a good way to, to make a plan so that the goals you set are realistic enough that they're achievable, but they're not like so, you know, meager that you're, you're holding yourself back. And then also some psychological insight as to, you know, basically the, the battle between yourself and getting the absolute most you can out of your practice time. I mean, if you think about it, that's really where the secret lies, in my opinion, because you could take the same exact amount of time practicing in a year. And if you can use resources to make yourself a more efficient, uh, better practicer, in the same amount of time, you could make two or three times the amount of gains. And I think, especially for adult learners, that's a really huge thing. It doesn't mean that you, I'm not saying that the whole point of this is to make progress and like try to become professional level, blah, blah, blah. But the thing that's gonna get you excited and make you wanna play more is making progress and feeling like the time you put in, you're, you're getting, you're reaping the rewards of all the time and hard work you're putting in. And I think this book, Practice Mind, is excellent for that. It's, a little less, you know, there still is plenty of kind of musical examples, but a lot of it <laughs> is kind of more about the process, the journey of, of practicing and learning both on a micro scale, like, less, like practice session to practice session, and also on a macro scale, like how to plan for things in the future, how to, you know, set goals and do that kind of thing. Really good book, highly recommend it. Um, so there you have it. Those are my top five recommendations. I really hope at least one of these books is a book you've either never heard of or you haven't considered reading it. And then I hope you go ahead and pick them up. I'll have links to all of them um, below. And I hope, yeah, I hope you really enjoy them. They really made an impact on me. Um, and so I just want to share that with you. So anyway, my dog is now battling all the other neighborhood dogs. Um, <laughs> So I got to go, but thank you so much. Please subscribe and I'll see you next week.